Good evening folks, this is Tom Herbert, uh, the Useful Coach, and uh, in true Useful Coach style, I'm doing an impromptu uh, presentation uh, with no planning, um, based off a comment that my friend Mishka Hawker Yates left in the Lattice Climbing Coaching Forum. And this was related to a question, or rather a post from someone who said that before they do any fingerboard training, they uh, slap themselves to get psyched up. Um, many people know this if you're doing any kind of uh, athletic pursuit or something, you know, you'll normally do something to amp you up, to get you excited. It could be stamping on the floor or, or like, uh, you know, slapping yourself, uh, even smelling salts or something like that. You know, if you see power lifters, what they do is they come in and they swear and they shout and they slap or somebody slaps them on the back and it gets them jacked up and ready to, to do maximum performance. So. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this presentation is that I wanted to try and explain a little bit about what is actually going on and um, uh, whether or not uh, there is a more quote-unquote optimal way to manage this, this kind of excitory response. Um, so, as always, like I say, this is not practiced, so uh, anything could happen. Uh, right, your nervous system has two branches, the sympathetic uh, part and the parasympathetic part. The sympathetic part is the excitory part. It is the, the nervous system branch that excites or raises or causes uh, kind of um, uh, action or an upregulation of action in various um, organs. The parasympathetic does the opposite, right? Uh, the easiest way to think about this is that evolutionary uh, evolution gave us this amazing thing where the heart, by default, runs at a much higher beats per minute. But what happens is that we have a vagus, what they call the vagus nerve, or the parasympathetic nervous system, that innervates that and actually puts the brake on the heart. And this is very clever because it means that if we need a, to increase our heart beat to push blood around the body um, uh, much quicker, we pull the brake off. And this is better than if you can imagine having a nervous system that actually has to uh, speed up the heart uh, by um, causing more uh, nervous system output to get the heart up. Rather, what happens is that the vagal nerve gets turned down and the brake gets turned off, which allows the heart by default to beat faster. Uh, what you'll notice is that as I'm talking, I'm going to become breathless and a little bit nervous. And that's because my parasympathetic nervous system is ramping up because I know that I'm recording this and um, it's a little bit nerve wracking. So I need to breathe, which is going to be something that we're going to talk about. So, like I said, we have the sympathetic nervous system, which makes things excited and amps everything up. We have the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system, which slows things down. Now, what is important about this can be explained a little bit like a like muscle tone. If I want to do a maximally powerful, strong contraction of the bicep muscle, right? I will get more power if my arm is relaxed and then I push into a uh, contraction versus if I have chronic tension, right, or tone, and then try and squeeze. So this is similar with the nervous system. If we want to perform maximally, express athletic power maximally, or athletic strength maximally, we want to be in a state of readiness. And readiness can be kind of thought of as the optimal midpoint between being excited, parasympathetic, uh, and being completely relaxed, parasympathetic. On the two ends of these things are trouble. If we are hypersympathetic, we are going to be uh, overly excited, having panic attacks, anxiety, etc. If we are too parasympathetic, too relaxed, we're going to be asleep or we're going to faint, right? So what we've got to think about it is how do we find this beautiful basal 
uh, sympathetic parasympathetic balance so that we can be ready to perform rather than being overly excited or under excited and let me try and explain this so I'm going to use uh, I don't know if you're actually going to see this, but I'm going to draw over it so that you can see the difference. Say we have somebody who is uh, a very kind of stressed individual, drinking a lot of caffeine. Caffeine is a drug that um, increases sympathetic nervous activity. That's why you feel alert, right, if you have caffeine. Um, this person has a lot of stuff going on in their life. <clears throat> they are... Um, just overly excited and just like amped up the whole time. Think of them as like a bicep muscle that has just high resting tone, okay? What we can say is if this is, if this uh, up here is, this is sympathetic, right? Up the top and this is parasympathetic. So this is parasympathetic and this is sympathetic and this is a kind of graph thing we're going to do. This individual, let's call him uh, A, right? has this basal sympathetic uh, level that is high, okay? We can say that this, let's say that this is this hypothetical optimal position, the balance between, the balance point between being parasympathetic and sympathetic, okay? This person A, who's a very stressed individual, has a high sympathetic response, right? Basal response. When that person wants to perform in both life and in sports, to get the maximum sympathetic response out of him, he is actually, in a sense, going to have less room to move. So here, we can call this kind of nervous system reserve, right? He has resting bicep tone, he now needs to, uh, to perform or express power. He doesn't have as much give to express that power, right? He has a kind of low nervous system reserve. You take another person who is, let's say, a Bruce Lee, right? Bruce Lee is just this kind of very chilled, very calm individual, right? So... B for Bruce Lee, right? <clears throat> this gap here is just, you know, it's arbitrary. I'm just trying to show the difference between the two. So here we have Bruce Lee, <coughs> which, who is like water, my friend, who's just very relaxed, right? Everything is ready, but just relaxed, so that when he needs to do his punch or whatever, he has this kind of relaxed, ready tone, so that he gets this, he gets the power, right? So his nervous system reserve is greater. And what this means is that what we want to do in life is that if we can bring our basal nervous system response down, we are going to have more reserve to do more. So here's an example, which I'm doing right now, okay? What I've just done is I've just slowed the pace of my talking down. I'm standing still and I'm taking more breaths to try and drop my nervous system response down. You should even hear that my voice is automatically becoming lower and what it's actually giving me is it's giving me a calmer persona so that I can do all this presentation without getting too excited. Because the more I get excited, the more tension I have in my body, the higher my heart rate goes, and actually the more anxious I feel. And this is really important, and I think even more important in climbing, right? As we express effort, in what we're doing, climbing and athletic um, output, we are automatically going to be raising our heart rate because we are doing, we are expending energy and we're asking our muscles to do work. So what we can think about is that as we are climbing, or this applies to any athletics, this basal sympathetic 
parasympathetic rate is going to be starting to creep up. And it's creeping up as we see our heart rate increase to a point where we're going to kind of plateau and just be churning out the, the performance at this rate of heart rate. What this means though is that as the heart rate is going up and our sympathetic response is becoming greater, we start having less reserve here when it matters, right? And when it matters would be expressing power, right? Or making very good decisions, right? At the spur of the moment. We know that the more anxious you get, the more, the higher your heart rate is, etc., etc. Your ability to make decisions is actually going to be diminished. And it's all really about this quote unquote nervous system reserve. So the whole point of this presentation was for me to show you that what we want to try and do is do everything we can to bring our nervous system down to parasympathetic level so that we can always have nervous system reserve. You as a climber, um, predominantly uh, kind of sport climbers, already know this from the point of the, 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 the climber that is the calmest, the climber that keeps a good pace, the climber that is breathing throughout and not over gripping, etc., is going to be able to have the reserve to do something powerful when it is needed. If you're continually just doing maximum, 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 over grip, over grip, over grip, and constantly just varying the speed the whole time, you're going to become more and more excited and you'll probably get more pumped, etc., etc. So, what I want to give you is two ways that we can actually drop ourselves back down to the parasympathetic level. And these are two things. One, we need to do this before we do any training or performance, and we need to do this during. Okay, so what is very interesting is that there is a feedback loop. If I ask you to start hyperventilating, or to be do what they call ap apical breathing, which is short, sharp, fast breaths in the chest. <sighs> if I asked you to do that for five minutes, <clears throat> you would start feeling very flushed in the head, you'd probably start sweating, and you'd feel very kind of panicky anxiety and having anxiety. Because when we are under threat, this is the breathing pattern that we default to. If I was to suddenly go boom, you would immediately start going, <laughs> right? And your heart rate shoots up in ready, to be ready to, to escape or run away, right? It's trying to flood the body with blood, trying to release adrenaline and things like that, right? So what happens is if you mimic this, <laughs> you are doing the kind of flip. What you're doing is you're sending a sympathetic response and upregulating everything in the body. This is exactly what the post was about. When the guy was saying he wants to get psyched to do his fingerboarding or whatever, he is whatever, slapping himself, which is in a sense sending a signal to the body that it's under threat, right? That this is exciting. Same as stamping, right? What you're doing is that you're sending this response to the body that you're under threat and that you must be ready to perform. This is very good because you want to do that. Right? One of the reasons when you do a warm-up before doing any climbing, say you've just come from the office, is actually trying to get your body ready. Right, You might be kind of sleepy, but you do all these things, jumping jacks, whatever, to get yourself excited. Right, um, Or you drink a coffee or whatever. So the same way that that heightened excitory behavior and excitory breathing makes you sympathetic, The opposite is true the other way around. If you slow your breathing down, your heart rate will drop because you're sending a signal to the body that actually you're not under threat, that you can be relaxed and you can be rested. And this is the primary key. You have direct ability to change your nervous system state by the pattern and the pace of your breathing. 
And this is important. Why? Because just by changing how you breathe, you can start pulling your sympathetic response down, right? What this means is that, say you've come from a really stressful day at work, what you don't want to do is suddenly start doing jumping jacks to get ready for climbing or any athletic pursuit, right? What you want to do is you actually want to find a quiet place, you probably want to lie on your back, and you want to just breathe slowly. Because you want to pull this down so that when you need to jack yourself up, you have the space to do so. You want to relax the arm so that when you need it, you can do maximum power, right? So, before I get to this diagram, what I've got here is point number three is slow belly breaths. And the easiest way to think about doing it is you want to take a breath in and then just count to two and then breathe out and count to two and breathe in and what will happen is that it will just become bigger the gaps between the breaths can become bigger and you will just find that your whole body will start to relax now if you do it for too long you may fall asleep which is not ideal but you want to do like maybe 20 breaths just find somewhere you can sit somewhere or you can lie down and just reset your nervous system to bring it down to be more parasympathetic so that once you've reset now you can start getting it ready and you can go out and you'll actually find that what you can do is you can bring your nervous system say you've done 20 belly breaths an hour here you can bring your nervous system up to here and actually this is where you'll perform really well and then when you really need to do like a maximum effort like psych, this is where you can then push from if you get too up here, you don't have any psych to push. So what you want to do is you want to get to this position here so you have a nice big psych reserve, we'll call it in climbing, to go to. This strange diagram. In an emergency room, they have a technique called the carotid sinus massage, or the vagal maneuver which is used to uh, uh, stop or reduce people's uh, uh, tachycardia, like um, uh, hyper um, heart rate, a very high heart rate. And what this is, is that it's called the carotid sinus massage because it's, it's related to the carotid artery. So the carotid artery is, is the main artery that supplies blood to your brain, right? And what you can do is, or what uh, doctors do, is they find your carotid pulse, right? And you can do this. So you just like put it there on the side of your neck and you should be able to find your pulse. And then what you do is you just move your fingers just lateral behind, so going backwards, and you find your vagus nerve, right? I think it's like called cranial 10 or something. And all you do, and what doctors do, is you actually massage just behind the carotid artery. And what this massage does is it sends a vagal or it hyper stimulates the parasympathetic, the parasympathetic nervous system is a vagus, vagal uh, nervous system, the vagus nerve. And so what happens is that by massaging the vagus nerve, which is easily found here, the vagus nerve is everywhere in peripheral, but you can find it quite easily, and also in your ear, you can actually bring down your heart rate because you are stimulating directly the parasympathetic nervous system branch, right? Changing your breathing stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system branch, and physically palpating your neck in this what is called the vagal maneuver and you can find many videos online on how to do this um, also will do that so what I've got here is what you can do to reset 
yourself before you're doing any climbing or performance. And also, this is what you can do while you're performing. So for instance, say you're on a rest point on a climb, this is exactly what you want to do. You probably can't do this, but you can do this breathing. So, what I say? Find your carotid pulse, right? Just move your fingers slightly behind it, and just massage up and down your neck. You can do one side at a time. You don't have to press hard, just like find the tissue and just go along up and down. And while you're doing that, you can do slow belly breaths. So you take a breath in, do a count of two, breathe out, do a count of two, breathe in. And just do that for like 20, 20 breaths, right? And as you do it, you're just gonna feel yourself drop parasympathetically. This is also very excellent to do just before you go to bed. If you're lying in bed and you're having trouble to sleep, start just counting your breaths and find how slow they get. And you'll find that you'll probably get to like 25, 30 and you might have already fallen asleep. It's dropping you down this. So, to sum up, if this can look any worse, what we want to do is we want to have really good sympathetic, let's call it psych reserve, here. Because if the muscle has tone in this metaphor, we, don't, we cannot express maximal power. If we have a relaxed arm, a relaxed muscle, we can snap it when we want to. So we want to do everything we can to drop ourselves down into the parasympathetic state so that when we need to ramp ourselves up, we can by doing things like slapping, smelling salts. So smelling salts work because of the ammonia and it causes irritation in the, in the sinus cavity and just sends a shock to the, the body. Um, we have the ability to go up the nervous system staircase and push into, into where we need to do. So climbing, you, you're, you're getting more and more stressed. You try and keep bringing yourself down parasympathetically. So when you need to perform, when you really need that, 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 that ability, you have that reserve. And I'm going to end it there because I can keep repeating the same thing um, because I like waffling. So anyway, this is Tom Herbert. This is The Useful Coach. This is a very impromptu uh, pr uh, presentation on the uh, nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Uh, thank you.